In the next series of lessons, we're going to talk about scientific notation. We'll talk about how to understand it, how to convert numbers from standard notation to scientific notation, and then from scientific notation to standard notation. Just for a moment, I want you to imagine that you are a scientist, and you've been doing research on bacteria, on how quickly bacteria reproduce. And you started out with one, and now you are at this very large number, 328 one, two, three million, billion, trillion, 328 trillion bacteria. And you want to write this in a paper. Now, do you want to write this number 328 trillion over and over and over again with all those zeros? Well, of course you don't, because that's a lot of zeros. Mathematicians have to write big numbers like that all the time. So they came up with a kind of a shorthand notation for writing large numbers, and it's called scientific notation. Scientific notation is used to express very large or very small numbers quickly and easily. So for example, let's take our 328 trillion example. Maybe we wanted to write that in a shorter form. So what we can do with scientific notation is convert that into that shorter form. And scientific notation always has this form. It has one number on the left side of the decimal and then any other set of numbers on the right hand side of the decimal times 10 to some power. And let's think about that for a moment. Let's say we had the number 2, and we multiplied that by 10. Well, that would give us 20. That's 10 to the first power, 2 times 10 to the first power. Now, if we multiply 2 times 10 to the second power, well, that's 2 times 100, and that's 200. And as you can see, if I keep doing this, 10 to the third, I'll get 2,000. And each time, I'm adding a number of zeros equal to the power of the exponent of 10. And that allows us to do this neat little trick where we're shortening or extending our numbers. So in this case, using the form for scientific notation, I would count the number of decimals back to this first digit right here, 328 to the 3 right there. And I count how far I need to go back. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then I would write my three here, because I only get one digit to the left of the decimal, my decimal point, and then any other significant digits, those are the numbers that aren't zero, two, eight, times 10 to the whatever power. So three, six, nine, 12, 14, 10 to the 14th. And what that means is if I take 3.28, and I multiply it by 10 to the 14th power, I'm going to move that decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that's going to give me my answer. The answer in this case being just a simpler way to write this very large number. And you can see, of course, that we can work that the other way as well. We can look at a number like 1.4 times 10 to the second, and we can quickly realize that what that means is 1, and then we move the decimal point over two spaces, 140. So 1.4 times 10 to the second is 140, because 1 1.4 times 100 moves that decimal place over two spaces. That's the whole point of what we're doing. Now let's take a look at a small number, a very small number here, and see how we could represent that in scientific notation. Once again, we want to keep our format of x.2 x, 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 whatever the numbers are there, times 10 to some power. We don't know what it is. It could be any power, so we'll just put the x variable there. x, point, and then any additional significant digits times 10 to the x power. Now, in this case, my zeros are on the left-hand side, and I want to keep this format. So, in other words, I've got to move the decimal this time to the right. right? I'm going to have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spaces to get it right there between these two significant digits. So I have one number on the left-hand side, and then a decimal point, and seven. And to get that decimal point there, I'm going to have to multiply times 10 to the negative power. The negative power is going to take this decimal and move it the number of appropriate spaces over. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces over. So 1.7 times 10 to the negative 7. And just to check that out, let's try it out. So we'll take our 1.7 here, and we'll move our decimal point over. 1, 2, and we'll put a 0 there. 3, 0 there. 4, 0 there. 5, 0 there. 6, 0 there. 
seven, zero there, and then we move our decimal there. Do we have the same number of zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one more over to get between the one and the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one more over. Before we get to the practices, understand this is just a way of encoding, if you will, different numbers. It's a way of taking this big number and making it small. Taking this large looking number, which is actually very, very, very small, and putting it in a more readable format, right? So these two are much more readable, much more writable than these larger numbers.